Open Your Eyes is brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank. Welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning right. I'm April Martinez. And I'm Sonic Kessel. And good morning, Belize. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday. It was a long weekend, so thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Isani. Good morning, How dear friend. How are you today? Man, I'm good. Was your last weekend? Sorry? Your long weekend. Ah, man, I, you know, I can't complain. Yeah. It was quite eventful, <laughs> yes. I've been out and about from Friday. <laughs> what do you do for what do you do for a long weekend in the sense that do you have something planned now that you know that the holiday is coming or do you just take it by ear? Like I just never go plan through? anything. You don't ever plan anything. How does that I'm work? Spontaneous. Out for you? I, I, oh, I enjoy being in the moment and spontaneity is king. So if I wake up and I decide I'll do something, then I'll go with that. If I decide that I won't do anything and just stay at home and chill. And that's that too. Okay. But so yeah, you I don't, would, I, I'm not the I'm not the planner. You're not <clears throat> Sorry, the planner. I'm not the planner kind of guy. I don't. You would not just, not for uh, like events and trips and stuff. I don't I don't bother with that. You don't plan. You just Spur go of the moment. Go with the flow. Yeah. Interesting. You know, you have some people that are like that. Mm -hmm. I used to be like that, um, and then you have other people that they need to have a. An itinerary. An itinerary. Yes. Right. Yes. They need to have. I don't a plan. believe in agendas and itinerary when you it comes don't. to you know making decisions regarding my weekend and stuff like that. Unless if it's work-related, but that's understood. So, like, if you, if you know you're going to Placentia, yeah. you mm -hmm. know and go Google, like, restaurants nah, or look nah, at nah, different nah, places nah. to see what nah. to do, you just, you know, figure it I out. I just go to Placentia, yeah, <laughs> and then in that moment, I go with what works. Interesting. So I figure, okay, if I go to Placentia and we're passing tips to tuna, all right, I could stop in and get something to eat or have a few drinks and go on, just like that. Is, I don't, yeah, are I, other I parties that like that? The people that you hang out with are like that with you? Most of us are. Really? Yes, Interesting. Yes. I, I don't, I don't know. I think that there's always that one person in the group that like, mm, maybe we should have thought this through before yeah. we do something. We don't have space or time for those kind of people in my little circle. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you had a, a, an eventful weekend, yeah. to say the least. Um, I hope our viewers at home enjoyed the weekend. I think this is the second year in a row that we've had this particular holiday. Day, I believe um, so. Celebrated, right? Yeah. So I'm still getting used to it. Like I, well, now because of work, I know so that I it's a second holiday. Second or third, somewhere there about. Right, place. but it's it's a recently new holiday. Well, it's it's new. fitting for a particular reason. Right. Beyond the activities that we engage in on a personal level, it's in observation of mm -hmm. the father of the nation. Right. Right. And so we always have to remember. Uh, the reason why this time of year in January is given to us as a day to celebrate the achievements of mm -hmm. George Price in terms of him being uh, the foremost or preeminent nationalist that we've known yeah. in this country. Yeah. Um, the, the principles that he stood for, not only as a politician, but as an individual, mm -hmm. and those transcend uh, to where we are today. I mean, yeah. he's before us, but you know, a lot of those principles carry over mm -hmm. uh, when we look at nationhood and what have you. You know, coincidentally, um, it was, uh, yes, uh, the mm -hmm. Honorable George Price's birthday yesterday, as well as Martin Luther King Jr., mm -hmm. right? So it's uh, two revolutionists almost, if yeah. to say the least, uh, for MLK different for countries. The for the and George Price. Right. DCP is for the Belizeans. Yeah, and so yeah. I, I found it very funny. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine mm -hmm. from the U.S. and um, she said, oh yeah, it's a holiday for us here too. Yeah. And then I, uh, you know, a yeah. light bulb kind of clicked. But, um, but yes, it was to, co to commemorate uh, George Price uh, yesterday. It's his birthday yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe there were several events taking place uh, here in Belize yes. City. There was also um, one at the Banquitas House yes, of Culture. Yes, there was one at the Banquitas House of Culture. Is that the one that's showing on screen right there where mm -hmm. you have um, his speeches, of course. And this is still a traveling exhibit that we, that we keep talking about that's going around the country. But mm -hmm. this one in particular 
was um, designed for Orange Walk since yeah. it was in there. So you, right now you're looking at the screen and there are these, um, these different photographs that were taken of George Price at Orange Walk. There mm -hmm. are pictures of um, him standing in front of a large um, hill of, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's either bagasse or, or sugar, mm -hmm. if I can't, I can't really tell because all of the pictures are, are much older and black and white. Mm -hmm. And these, of course, these pictures come from the um, National Belize Archives and Records Service. Mm -hmm. But what is um, different about these pictures is that we don't really have a lot of context. You know, we get stuff mm -hmm. and we don't really get the information with the stuff. And so these photos, yes, we know they were taken in Orange Walk because there's certain... Um, scenes right mm -hmm. that are still there there are certain spaces that are still still there in orange walk that we can tell that that's where it was taken and photographed mm -hmm. but context we, we we don't really have context so historical or otherwise. yes so mm -hmm. we are hoping that somebody some grandparent sees it and says hey you know i think i i was a child when that was taking place or i remember where mm -hmm. that photo was taken and hopefully we can get some information out of it but yes isani you're right um that was the exhibit taken at the Banquitas House of Culture yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be there for two months. And then mm -hmm. it's going to travel again. <laughs> if you look at this typewriter that belonged to the late George Price mm -hmm. and the fact that one of his many speeches is still in mm -hmm. the typewriter itself, it harkens back to a time when, you know, you had <clears throat> this strong political movement mm -hmm. and you know while there was a spoken word there was also the written word the, yeah. the, the manually type written uh, speeches that that george price would have presented you know yeah. uh, in certain spaces mm -hmm. right and i think the idea of this this exhibit encapsulates that entire movement yeah. to nationhood. I agree. If you, look at, if you look at the images and some of the, the um, items that are on display, right, it tells that story. Mm -hmm. it, and it that's really the beauty does. of it. Um, mm -hmm. What I will say too, that, that typewriter of his design it still works. Yeah. It still works. I don't think the ribbons, I don't think they make the ribbons <laughs> anymore, yeah. but it definitely still, still works. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody would send a ribbon, I'm pretty sure <laughs> they could they could type yeah. a message and of course yeah. the Belize constitutional instrument um was also displayed right mm -hmm. so i am really excited that this exhibit took place i i like to look at it because every single time we put it in a different um district or in a different place there's something new that mm -hmm. we uncover so it's yes it's the same exhibit but it's always with a twist um conveying George Price in, a, in that particular area, yeah. right? And that's why I, I enjoy being a part of this exhibit. But that is the reason why we had our holiday uh, yesterday. I hope everybody else enjoyed it. I had to work. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad our folks at home enjoyed it. Um, but uh, on a lighter note for our What's Buzzing um, Isani, kind of keeping with the times and keeping with the trends, we were talking about a typewriter that no longer... Um, we no longer use, but for it's some reason... No longer reason, being manufactured. No, no mm. longer being manufactured, but everything old always comes back. <laughs> um, but for some reason here in Belize, and I don't know if you're this type of person, um, we take uh, trends very, very seriously. Well, um, I'll go a step... Memes <clears throat> as well. Why is my throat bothering me? <laughs> I'll go a step further, April, to say that a lot of the trends that we follow are based on American influence. Yes. It's almost as if the Belizeans are really Americans in another country. Well, right? we get most of we our media, our, right? We have our identity, a unique one, but a lot of, a lot of the stuff that influences us comes from America. what we describe as Western media, yeah. America. So, so it's to say this, right? The Stanley Cup is all the craze right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and some people might say, what is the Stanley Cup? Not the hockey trophy. Right. That is also the Stanley Cup. But this one is, is similar to the Yeti Cup. Yeah. And we know Belizeans went crazy over it. all things Yeti last year or the year before. So I'm presuming that this won't be too far away. Yeah. Right? Because it's all the buzz in the United States right now. If you look at... Okay, so for, per, for persons who may not know what the Stanley Cup is, as I mentioned, it's similar to a Yeti Cup. Uh, the difference is this time around... 
is primarily marketing. Right. Right? There it is. There it is. So I, it's I, the way how these items are being marketed to the masses of consumers that has created this buzz where you have Americans standing in line for hours on end to purchase one of these cups, right? And part of the marketing is word of mouth, April. Mm -hmm. there were, uh, from what I read, there was a vehicle fire where a Stanley Cup was inside the vehicle at the time that it went up in smoke and whatever content was inside the cup remained cold notwithstanding <laughs> notwithstanding the fact that the vehicle was destroyed by fire right right so you hear all of these stories and all of this is what creates this this buzz you know, yeah. huge buzz around it i just don't understand it i uh -huh. i found it funny because i am not a and i'm not somebody that keeps up with the times unfortunately mm -hmm. yeah that's the yeah, that's the video is. you were talking about yep. and i mean the stanley cup does look intact as as well mm -hmm. um <laughs> this is in a it's in a car um but i i i was very late to mm -hmm. the trend of um stanley cups i'm still I still use my, my, other, my other regular insulated flask, well, here's the so thing, I don't right? know. It's, right? I, I always say it's always, it always boils down to marketing and branding. Yeah. Right? Because, dare I say, you would have generic versions of this kind of cup. Of course. All around. Just like how you have the generic versions of Yeti. Yes. Right? And do the same thing. It's the, there's nothing really different, different per se yeah it's like i said it's just how it is marketed right i saw it and i said oh they have a griffin as their as their mascot and uh -huh. i thought that was cool but that was just the nerd in me yeah. thinking that that was a cool part of the cup i had no clue as to why everybody was so <laughs> um interested in this cup. But in i a think sense, it's the handle in, in a <laughs> sense it would be considered one of the heritage brands it's yeah. been around since 1913 yeah and so there's there's history to it. Everything old right. always comes yeah. back. And so I am I'm, I'm wondering now how many people actually um, own a Stanley Cup in Belize now that it's um, flooded the shelves. Well, it's here. the most coveted item in the states right now. So so as I've mentioned, you have persons who stand in line, and that's one. Two, the resale market. So this item goes for forty five US. Mm -hmm. But on the resale market, it's being advertised at $235 US, right? And so, and so I don't know if we Belizeans have gotten on it yet. We Perhaps we're I've still seen a very much in our yeti phase. I don't know. I've seen yeah. a couple of people around that have it and, yeah. and so on. But I, again, I didn't think it was this big thing. Mm -hmm. I just said, okay, that's a, that's a cool looking cup with a handle. I, you know, but... Belizeans have this thing for following these trends. Today, it's the Stanley Cup. Tomorrow, it's going to be something We're part else. of this whole thing that we describe as um, conspicuous consumption. <laughs> we yeah, are. It's We've thing. had this conversation before. Yeah. <laughs> I, and and I'll, I'll raise my hand and say I'm guilty as charged. Uh, I, I, think it, I think it's hard not to be. You yeah. know, we're, we're flooded with all of this content in our, not just on our TVs, but mm -hmm. in our social media. It's yeah. everywhere. You're, if your friends are talking about it, you want to be a part of that conversation too. There's an and, overwhelming yeah. sense of materialism, right? And, you know... <clears throat> some people may be into that particular item, the Stanley mm -hmm. Cup. Others may be into something else, else right? Yeah. We're driven by, you know, what we own and, and, we like and being stuff. able to show off what we have and yeah. all that type of stuff. We like stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I mean, it's good for certain companies that, you know, and that goes back to capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. Whosoever is making these big bucks. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, mm. if you, and this is just me, speaking from somebody that owns a lot of cups and it's not because of trends it's just i i see something cool and i want to put my my water in it and that's so you're a collector it. I am of a collector of, of cups, cups. Yeah. Well, i have my mugs. Beer mugs yeah i like i have my mugs if if you or to ask me uh -huh. i have the you know um caricature mugs mm. i have a mug for every season you know <laughs> and the same thing with my earrings i have yeah. a mug for every season just like i have an earring for every season um but i am a collector of mm -hmm. of these things and unfortunately that's bad for somebody like me will i will <laughs> i want to get a stanley cup probably not because i already have like god knows how many insulated yeah. cups but it just kind of shows, showed me the other day when I was cleaning out my cupboard how much of these items I don't even really use. Yeah. Right? And I think that goes the same for, for a lot of us that 
get on these trends or think something is pretty and shiny and we want to buy it because it's there, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily need it, yeah. right? And I think that's one more thing with these trends. But I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to continue until the next um, flashy item comes out mm -hmm. and we'll be on that trend again. And we'll be here to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just a little bit of the piece of the pie for what's buzzing is signing. And even though it's not Monday today, mm -hmm. it is still the beginning of the week and of course we do here every beginning of the week is we bring you the eye on the news. So over the weekend uh, in Guatemala a new president was sworn in. Yes. Uh, Bernardo Arevalo uh, assumes his seat as the president of Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And we had our colleague from the newsroom, Hippolyto Novello, uh, attending the swearing-in ceremony yes. in Guatemala, where Prime Minister John Briseño and Foreign Minister uh, Francis Fonseca were also in attendance. Mm -hmm. right? um, it's that show of uh, good neighborliness, if I could describe yes. it as such. Yes. Notwithstanding what is presently before the world court, which is the territorial dispute that is up for adjudication, right? But there's a new president in Guatemala. Um, whether that speaks well for the Belize-Guatemala relations, notwithstanding the claim, as I've mentioned before, mm -hmm. is yet to be seen. Yeah. Uh, president Arevalo... <clears throat> is part of and comes from this sort of grassroots movement. Mm -hmm. It's called the SEED, yeah. right? Uh, Movimiento Semilla. Semilla. Right? Mm -hmm. And it has faced some serious opposition mm -hmm. from other Guatemalan politicians and policymakers and what have you yeah. for what it represents. Simply because it's essentially a strong anti-corruption movement and you know, in Guatemala, much like in Belize, there are all these social concerns yeah. about corruption, persons abusing power, and persons abusing their office uh, for personal or gains otherwise. Yeah. And so, because of that, you know, his inauguration, his coming or ascension to office was somewhat controversial. Yes. Right? Uh, before we get into <clears throat> a proper conversation, April, mm -hmm. I want to be able to go to the first interview that we have lined up. And this was with uh, Prime Minister Briseño in Guatemala, who, as I mentioned, attended mm -hmm. the inauguration of uh, President Arevalo. So we'll go to that first and then we'll come back and do sure. some chit chat. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think I want, it's important for us um, to make the point that both the Foreign Minister and myself, we came here to show our support to um, President, well, President Lake Revelo. Um, Guatemala is, is our neighbor, it's our close friend. So it is important to continue to show, to strengthen that relationship between both countries. Um, unfortunately, there seems to be still some uncertainty, um, differences between different members in Congress and with President Elect Revelo. President Elect Revelo should have been sworn in a few hours ago and up to now while well, we still are not certain as to exactly when that's going to happen. But I'm hoping that um, common heads will prevail, that common sense will take over, that the people in Congress need to understand that we should always respect the right of the people. Democracy must prevail in every modern country and Guatemala is no different. Yeah. So as I've mentioned, uh, there was <clears throat> that strong opposition from within the Guatemalan mm -hmm. government, in this case the Congress, as the Prime Minister alluded to, mm -hmm. right? And if I'm not mistaken, part of the pushback also came from the Attorney General. Yes. Right? Um, it goes back to what I'm saying, nonetheless, April, where you have certain principles or certain fundaments upon which persons, you know, come to office or offer themselves for public office. And 
if you would take a position where you are anti-corruption, for instance, and that message resonates with the masses of your supporters, then for those persons who may be corrupt or who may be engaged in corrupt mm -hmm. activities, they feel threatened. Of course. They don't want to be exposed right. or they don't want the dirty laundry to be out in the open if there is ever an investigation that, mm -hmm. you know, looks into certain uh, transactions, right. certain deals, how certain people came about certain wealth, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And so <clears throat> I'm not saying that that is the sole reason why, why there is this opposition. I'm mm -hmm. simply saying that there is a formidable opposition in terms of him rising to power and him yeah. taking his seat as the president of Guatemala. You know, um, and I'm glad you brought that up because we see this in the case of um, several Latin American countries mm -hmm. uh, that come off of um, uh, some sort of authoritarianism, mm -hmm. if you will, or dictatorship, if you will. And um, his, his political movement, uh, his philosophy, his mandate was anti-authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that he's a sociologist by, yeah. by degree. And so his philosophy and his concept of how to interact with people or how to approach mm -hmm. uh, persons would be very, very different from other politicians in the past. I'm, I'm actually really curious to see how he's going to do in office. But um, notwithstanding all of um, the mm -hmm. opposition, notwithstanding uh, the, per the prosecutors that tried to over, um, overturn the election mm -hmm. results, um, he was sworn in a little bit after midnight um, mm -hmm. on Monday. Uh, he was supposed to be sworn in on, on Sunday, I believe, and you know mm -hmm. it, it extended. And he still was able to be inaugurated as president of Guatemala. I look at <clears throat> what I mentioned earlier to be this grassroots movement where, mm -hmm. you're, where you're essentially galvanizing your support from the lower base, yes. if you want to use that description. And it reminds me of the Mexican president, AMLO. Or the who, Salvadoran president. Yeah, mm -hmm. who used a similar uh, shoring up of support from the ground mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. right? To, to, to not only build a momentum, mm -hmm. but to also be able to govern from that perspective yeah. with, with, with the everyman or the, the, the person who's at the bottom of the proverbial ladder in mind. I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, but that is also how Donald Trump came to rise. Mm -hmm. At the fact that he, he looked at the persons that seemed like they were being left out yeah. of the equation, right? Yeah. And that is a majority of your population, mm -hmm. right? So it is a, a smart political tactic, if you will. Um, it's a matter of remaining true to what brought you to power yeah, though agreed. i mean <laughs> I, I i definitely agree and i'm mm -hmm. again i'm very curious to see how he's going to um to to rule in yeah. his in his um in his um tenure, tenure. His, his term yeah because i'm not right? sure if it's four or five years that they that they they're go given on. one term essentially okay uh, right so once you've run that course you don't really go up for re-election, I think right? he's about, uh, he, he's in his, his mid-60s, I mm -hmm. think. So he would run his, his tenure and then he wouldn't yeah. again. I want to quickly go to uh, the other uh, clip, clip that we have mm -hmm. with Foreign Minister Fonseca, who was also in attendance. So if we could pull that up as well, that would be good. Okay. No, obviously, uh, you know, Belize is very concerned. Um, Guatemala had, as the Prime Minister said, a peaceful, fair elections. Um, there has now been, for several months now, uh, efforts by uh, particular groups in Guatemala, um, in effect, to overturn the will of the people. Um, so Belize strongly rejects that. We condemn that. Uh, we are here, the Prime Minister and I came to Guatemala <coughs> because we want to send a clear signal that we support democracy in Guatemala. Um, we support the new el president elect. Uh, we want to see a peaceful transition of power here in Guatemala. Um, so we're very, very concerned. The uh, inauguration was supposed to be take place a few hours ago. It has not taken place because of new obstacles. I, I, I in a sense, like the fact that he punctuated yeah. <clears throat> that clip by saying new obstacles. Yeah. Because it would have seemed that up until the time when he was finally sworn in, there were all of these roadblocks. 
mm -hmm. that were placed before him. Yeah. Why it can't happen, why it won't happen, why it shouldn't happen. Yeah. And I guess, as they've also mentioned, being able to respect the will of the people is the most important aspect of it all. They went yeah. to the polls. They voted in favor of this particular candidate. Uh, he won. Mm -hmm. And so it was fair and free. You have to be able to allow that to take its course. I think it's one of those um, <clears throat> moments where we're, we're living in a particular time now, Isani, where things like fake news or fake elections mm -hmm. or these and that um, are taking precedent um, in different parts of the world, not just in the, in the West here. Mm -hmm. And so we have, to be, we have to be careful how we um, deem certain um, presidential inaugurations, certain elections, um, because it's it's taking it's taking a sweep mm -hmm. uh we are talking about a free and fair democratic um process mm -hmm. every election here in the west we are a democratic um state mm -hmm. uh here in, in this side of the world all of us right and so it's very um it's been very weird for the past uh <coughs> six years i will yeah. say to, to hear these things of election fraud um and we are not um abiding by the will of the people but this is the will of the people mm -hmm. um and i think that the moments of ele uh, persons that are in these high positions of power their time is coming where even if they are not caught in a particular scheme this mm -hmm. man is going to now be your president he's going to check the books he's going to look at every single transaction made and if certain if certain things look faulty he is going to call it what it is i'm assuming well that, that is what he's <clears throat> one has to to consider what the opposing forces from within, what impact or bearing that would have on his presidency. Because if you have a situation where, yes, you were legitimately elected, mm -hmm. you assume your seat, but there are factions within your administration who did not necessarily support you in the beginning, right. then you could understand that they will try to undermine you mm -hmm. if they get the opportunity to. They will perhaps vote against any motion, motion that you bring maybe. forward mm -hmm. simply because they can oppose mm -hmm. that particular um, motion and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. I'm simply We've saying that people who have it out for you yeah. will do everything that they can to prevent you from being successful in terms of your administration in terms of being able to govern effectively. Yeah. Latin America has seen its fair share of um, puppet presidents. Mm -hmm. It has seen its fair share of dictators and so forth. Um, the unstable world yeah. of um, revolutions and wars that have swept uh, up until the early 90s, right? Mm -hmm. And so there, people are still in this position of do I trust my politician, do I not? Do I trust mm -hmm. the persons in office? Do I not? And um, he might come from a very good place, you're absolutely right, where he is trying to fix things. He's trying to mm -hmm. go against authoritarianism. But he will have persons in his, in his, in his um, party, in his, um, his government. in his government, sorry, that will undermine him. And how will that look in front of the people as well? Right? I you want to take all of, of that into consideration. I want to bring it back full circle before we conclude this conversation to say we're looking at it at least i am from the belize guatemala situation mm -hmm. where yes there is a particular claim before the international court of justice um belize and guatemala mm -hmm. belize and honduras the three neighboring countries are before the world court over claims of um territory mm -hmm. right and I would want to see and understand his outlook mm. from a diplomatic point of view mm -hmm. on these matters. That, that's, that's something that I would be interested in yeah. learning yeah. because every head of state, every head of government has his or her own perspective on certain regional Great. issues. Mm -hmm. In this case, I say regional because we're looking mm. at three countries and one claim, yeah. right? And so I, I just want to, to be able to, at some point in time, be able to digest that point of view that he would bring forward. I will, I will wrap up with the fact mm -hmm. that I really appreciate um, any of our government 
leaders that whenever something does mm -hmm. happen in our neighboring country, um, <clears throat> in this particular case, the presidential yeah. election, um, we lend our support in mm -hmm. any way we can, regardless of the fact that there is a claim. Before we were in the, um, in the international court, we have yeah. always had this thing where we support our neighbor in any way that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that this time around, before he was inaugurated, he was here. Yeah. Right? He came to visit, he had this conversation with our mm -hmm. leaders as well. It wasn't an official yes. visit. Uh, it was just perhaps, <clears throat> it was, it can be described as a whirlwind visit. Right. He came for a few hours, uh, met with the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. the then Foreign Minister, Eamon Courtney, mm -hmm. and the CEO in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and all of these other persons in that capacity. Um, but it was a courtesy call being yeah. paid on the Prime Minister of Belize, mm -hmm. um, following uh, President Arevalo, well, at the time, President-elect Arevalo's mm -hmm. election to office. Yeah, and so, I, like I said, I just mm -hmm. appreciate the fact that we've always had this, um, this sort of uh, um, neighborly mm -hmm. <laughs> gestures that we are able to talk to our neighbor regardless of the fact that there is a claim. And I think that now that we've gone to this inauguration, we've lended our support to the new president of Guatemala, we hope to see the steps that are going to be taken, taken after uh, we yeah. get the result of the ICJ. So it's, pretty, it's going to be pretty cool to see. That's in the offing somewhere. We're going to find <laughs> out. I don't know if we'll be here, but we'll find <laughs> out. I have, I have a number of years ahead of me still. But we'll conclude it with that. Um, you know, these stories and more certainly you guys can catch at 6 p.m. in our evening newscast. Um, mm -hmm. There is a whole lot more that we will be presenting in our evening bulletin. Yes. And so we urge you guys that if you don't uh, have the time to sit in front of your televisions, you can also catch us on Facebook or YouTube. But that does it for our Iron News this morning. All right, and we move into the weather forecast for today. Isan, it was a pretty good weekend. We had I, some rains I, this morning. I, you I, had some rains this morning? Yes. Okay, well, we're going to find out uh, what forecaster Derek Redon has to say. Good morning, forecaster. Good morning. All right, we seem to be having some technical difficulties there. But um, it, was, it was rainy in Belmopan, I think, mm -hmm. like Saturday morning. And then after that, it got really, really hot. And it was just nice weather after that. I think it was perhaps somewhere <clears throat> just after midnight or so that a pretty strong shower came down in Belize City. And waking up this morning and, you know, we're seeing water. Oh, really? I mean, for a while, it, it's been dry and, and hot really a lot of people were complaining that for some reason the heat felt unseasonal the heat felt unseasonal but well i guess so we're moving into the dry season but it mm -hmm. shouldn't be this hot yet we have forecaster rudon on the line good morning forecaster good morning good morning so we've been talking about the weather this weekend can you give us a general situation for today Okay, um, relatively dry conditions will continue today, but we are expecting an increase in, in moisture and therefore showers tonight and tomorrow. All right, and our 24-hour forecast? Okay, sunny skies with cloudy spells today, cloudy at times tonight. Isolated showers today, then a few showers will affect mainly the north and the coast late tonight. Okay, let's talk about our marine conditions. Let's talk about the winds. Okay, winds today will be from the east to southeast at 5 to 15 knots, and the seas will be light chopped. Okay, our temperatures, our highs and lows for today? Okay, highs today will be around 86 Fahrenheit over the coast, 90 inland, and 76 up in the mountains. The lows tonight will be 76 along the coast, 70 inland, 64 up in the mountains. Hmm. And our extended forecast for Wednesday and Wednesday night? Okay, we can expect skies to become cloudy at times tomorrow and tomorrow night with a few showers over most areas. All right. Um, any advisories or watches or warnings that you can give us for today? At this time, there is none. All right. Well, thank you so much for that update forecaster. Do have a good day. You're welcome and same to you. All right. So, yeah, be hot, Isani. I don't know if it's... Um, 
unseasonally hot. I should have asked the forecaster. We'll ask him tomorrow. <laughs> but we do have uh, a great lineup for you all this morning. Our first conversation is going to be a recap of the sugar industry. We'll be joined by the Minister of Agriculture, Food, Security and Enterprise, Jose Abelardo Mai, and he'll be giving us that recap. Our second conversation will be joined by the Valuation Manager for the Belize City Council. He will be speaking to us about getting up to scratch with our property taxes for 2024. Oh, that's a great conversation to have, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but before we get into all of that and more, we'll take a break and we'll be back with uh, Minister of Agriculture, Food Security and just got a lot less complicated with Belize Bank Contactless MasterCard Debit Card. Introducing our standard debit and MasterCard Platinum Debit Cards. Now you can make purchases anywhere MasterCard is accepted with one tap, pay and go. Your contactless card never has to leave your hands, especially in these times. And your card is embedded with multiple layers of security. Platinum card holders get to enjoy extra benefits like price protection, purchase protection, trip inconvenience and luggage protection, just to name a few. Start enjoying a cashless lifestyle today with the Belize Bank. Apply now for an undergraduate degree in animation, film or journalism at the Caribbean School of Media and Communication at the University of the West Indies, Mona. For more information, visit www.mona.uwi.edu forward slash apply. and get a chance to win a $10,000 homecation with Benny's quality and savings. If, if we all don't come together and work together to change the bigger climate picture, yeah, these efforts will be in vain. It's right there. I believe that we have something special that is also a secret right now, which is unexplored, undiscovered. I've been with the sugar preserving all morning, catching lobster and crunk, and then we realize it's time for lunch. And man, it's going to be good. I think they deserve it. These will offer you coping mechanisms when dealing with violent situations. That is a very simple phone number that you can store in case of any emergencies. Violence exists in the form of current rape. Welcome Marines as the uh, I am a totally new, new yeah, HD member. <laughs> we realize that success in agriculture isn't just about land and access to finance. We realize that we have members who have issues of domestic abuse, who have issues of child sexual abuse in their families. We've noted that the barriers and the obstacles are quite different for women and girls than for men. And this is why we decided to take a holistic approach. Violence against women and girls is an issue for me because I think it is used as measures of control and it is a reinforcement of negative power dynamics. 
um, all people, especially women who have been experiencing discrimination and um, injustice for quite some time, deserve to be um, afforded physical, emotional, financial, and mental um, stability and safety. There are a lot of persons who don't understand the dynamics, you know, of violence against women and girls. And so there's always need for advocacy and education to, and to keep the awareness. Economic empowerment, uh, that's what we've been focused on day one. Um, we've focused on creating opportunities, economic opportunities for women to establish themselves as independent business owners. On top of that, we've also created and ensured that we create male allies in their families, whether it's their husbands, their partners and so forth, to understand the rights of women and to also understand and upskill themselves as supportive partners of these women and girls. We need to educate um, young um, men and women within our society today, engage them in a one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction, educating them about the different types of domestic violence that we have within our society, and teaching them how um, ending violence against women and girls can um, help within our future generation in preserving um, the future for women. I believe it's important for persons to be aware of the positive enforcement and policy shifts in that of legislation because this is what brings about change. This is what brings about um, the change in people's mindsets and knowing that there are legislation, there are enactment of bills that advances the rights of women and girls. Everyone has a part to play. If we see or hear something, we shall see or do something. We have to stand up and make the changes ourselves to set the example for everyone else. I will continue to play my part by advocating to end violence against women and girls. We all need to make sure that we help to fight to eliminate violence against women and girls in our society. What grows together, goes together. Let's stand in solidarity to fight violence against women and girls. Everyone has a part to play. Everyone has a part to play in ending violence against women and girls. And welcome back. Our first conversation this morning is with the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, the Honorable Jose Abelardo Mai. Good, Good morning, Good morning, Minister. Sarah. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy, <laughs> Same Happy to you, my brother. Same yes. to you. There's been uh, a lot of developments in the sugar industry recently, and we've been covering it extensively um, from the initial date for the 2023-24 sugar crop to the stalemate that prevailed for the better part of two weeks between uh, the BSCFA and BSI and government as sort of the negotiator. So a lot is here for us to unpack this morning in our conversation, Minister, and I'm glad that you've been able to join us to have this conversation because I know that your role and your office has been integral in this entire thing, and it's the lifeblood of the North, the sugar. <clears throat> Let's start by discussing the negotiations, because we were not privy to what took place inside, inside yeah. the closed doors, but maybe you'd be able to share or shed some light in terms of some of the points that were sort of contentious if I could use that, if I could use that description, mm -hmm. because in some instances, there weren't any agreements on how to move forward. So perhaps mm -hmm. contentious is the best yeah. word there. <clears throat> Let's start with the discussions that were being held in your Creek uh, between both sides. Yeah, you started to understand the situation in context, I mm -hmm. think is important to get a little backdrop of the information. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the background, this goes back from before we were elected to government. Mm -hmm. And the main cause of all this was because the BSCFA 
which is the biggest association. Mm -hmm. They own more than 50% of sugar mm -hmm. industry produced in the north. They wanted to change the commercial agreement, mm -hmm. which they have a right to under the agreement. It says mm -hmm. that you can change what you have to write in time, mm -hmm. so much months before. And what they wanted was a change in the payment formula. Mm -hmm. yes. Everything started from there. Mm -hmm. BSI said, I will not do that. That's a transfer of value. Mm -hmm. I will not do that. And as such, the problems began there. Yeah. So they said, well, let's continue the negotiations. Mm -hmm. Let's roll over last year's agreement. Mm -hmm. This year, it was <laughs> no different. <laughs> I mean, we have been accused of kicking the can, can down the road, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which to a certain extent is almost an accurate statement mm -hmm. because we have failed to reach a long-term agreement. BSI mm -hmm. wants a seven-year agreement because they want this year time for investment. Any mm -hmm. bank wants a long-term agreement. The farmer is saying, I don't have a problem with you a long-term agreement, but we need to make changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this agreement has been in that, in that state for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, before the agreement expired, BSEFA said to them, we wish to renegotiate on the terms. We want to improve the terms to our farmers. Mm -hmm. In a 2024 modern the industry, I believe mm -hmm. it's time to make an update. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said no. All this time, the farmers are not beneficiaries of their fair trade premiums. Mm -hmm. Although, this is arguable, the sugar was sold as premium, mm -hmm. reportedly, mm -hmm. but payments were not made to BCFA. This is what BCFA contends. I've been in discussions with mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. from fair from trade too, sorry, from Tate and Lyle. So the farmer said, okay, if you have an agreement now, the agreement does not say that BSI will pay the fair trade. It says Tate and Lyle. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it is not Tate and Lyle who signs mm. the agreement. It is BSI. So he said, how is it that I will put here that Tate and Lyle is responsible for the payment of fair trade? But it is you who signed BSI, and you have already said that BSI and the are two different entities. Mm -hmm. So the farmer is saying, listen, if you want to sign this commercial agreement, then I want it and I to sign on the agreement too. Mm -hmm. Because I include your name in a document and I say, hey, I, I, mm -hmm. I have no business with that, mm -hmm. right? This is where they have one of the, cont one of the, one of the points mm -hmm. of high contention. They decided to get that out. The farmers are saying, I want, well, the leaders have said, we can work with a two, mm -hmm. a two year. But the General Assembly said, we give you permission for one, negotiate mm -hmm. for one. BSI wanted four. And right this way, the farmers, why they wanted one is because in one year, it is envisioned that the commercial, that the commi commission of inquiry mm -hmm. would be completed. Okay. And the commission of inquiry would bring to the surface all the doubts, mm -hmm. all the uncertainties, mm -hmm. all the inaccuracies, so to speak, that the farmers mm -hmm. are, uh, are believe that exist, and those then findings would help solidify a very fair and transparent agreement. Yeah. It will also set the base for a modern, updated, uh, sugar industry act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the farmer said, well, one year. He said, why would I sign for three years? The commercial inquiry ends in one year, but I'm very committed mm -hmm. to three years for things that I believe should not be or should be improved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have a right. I mean, if you think logically, mm -hmm. uh, farmers are not thinking uh, uh, negatively. They are thinking in a way that they can improve themselves. Now, BSI, on the other hand, says, I need at least four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because my financiers are telling me I need a four-year mm -hmm. agreement. Yeah. And so that is where we had a... But in the end, we ended up with two years. Mm -hmm. Initially, BSI had said, 
if you don't want to sign an agreement with me, I am prepared to let your members deliver sugarcane on the basis of same agreement as last year. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I had said to the association, I just want to roll over last year's agreement yeah. for four years. Mm -hmm. But I need to include two more new costs. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, hold on, man. You just offered to my farmers individually mm -hmm. that you are prepared to accept their kin as members of BSCFA, right, on the same conditions as last year. Mm -hmm. You are telling me, no association, you will do the same, but except you have two, two more yeah. charges. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the root of the problem here are two things. I want a better arrangement with my farmers, one, and two, mm -hmm. the element of trust. Yeah. <laughs> Which is arguably Which is the most the important. Most, yep. most important. Yeah. And I will say this to you, right? They say when you born somebody one time, mm -hmm. if you unborn him, mm -hmm. it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And the farmers have experienced this before, and I'm very, I'm, I'm very um, honest here. Mm -hmm. I'm being accused many times of being on the farmer's side, and I, as the Minister of Agriculture, it's hard not to be on the farmer's side. Mm -hmm. But I have to look at the investment side too, because I have invested yeah. millions of dollars in Belize. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I try as much as I can to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, and why? I mean, there's so many things that lead to mistrust. So many things. And I think that's the, that is the root mm -hmm. of all this problem because there's no trust. I remember. And this is the conversation because when BSISR moved or was preparing to move the operations to Big Creek, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because going through this city port was so uh, inefficient mm -hmm. and Costly. high cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So logically, you were thinking, Isan, if they're moving to Big Creek, it's because there will be a reduction in cost. Mm -hmm. And I've seen documents that say that we expect to have. 40% reduction in ocean freight, uh, sorry, in, in costs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the local handling costs, 40%. Let me stick up in there quickly, Minister. Wasn't the move from um, barging sugar to transporting it over land premised on the fact that there would have been serious reduction in those operational costs, right? At, the, at least... That was what was put forward in the media around the time when they decided Absolutely. that they will no longer go with Port of Belize, but they'll go to Big Creek because trucking it over land, less manpower, shorter distance in terms of being able to do that in a day or so. There must be some logical reason to move, logical and economic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any firm, any company, who moves one operation to the next is because there is a reduction in cost. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, how much is that reduction in cost? Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen documents that say 40% only on local handling. Mm -hmm. So, if I have seen the cost of local handling 9.2, 10.3, 11.2, 11 11.8, even up to 12. Point, I think the highest I've seen is $12.8 million mm -hmm. on local handling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Local handling is defined as moving the sugar from the sugar mill mm -hmm. to the port. Yeah. In this case, it's trucking. It's not, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't speak mm -hmm. of loading, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. say moving. Mm -hmm. In the case of Belize City, Steve Adoring, I think, was mm -hmm. unloading the sugar mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. crane into the belly of the, the vessel. Yeah. That system changed. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did not know, what farmers did not know, that there was something called a demurrage mm -hmm. mm. cost. That demurrage cost was never mm -hmm. made Discuss. known yeah. as a line item. Mm -hmm. There was local handling. Yeah. India, I suspect, when I was speaking to, to, to BSI, that they had costs such as repairs to barge and mm -hmm. to tugboats and mm -hmm. so on. It, there are a number of other costs, but uh, demurrage was never a part line item, mm -hmm. but it was a huge cost that was never made known. Mm -hmm. 
Or I did my research okay. and thereafter I found that there was. Mm -hmm. So in my view or in any farmer's view, if you are moving from point A to this point, point A to B, mm -hmm. and that eliminating that huge cost, mm -hmm. and the huge cost, because I asked what is the main cost that you incur, the local handling, they said, they didn't say demorage, mm -hmm. they said repairs to barge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at what, 40%, 50%, 60%? Mm -hmm. Then you have demorage, it's another 40%. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, in the farmer's mind, and anybody's mind, yeah. right? when you say that you're moving, you would eliminate those these expenses. two huge mm -hmm. cars. So you would say, oh, I don't have, you don't have demorage, mm -hmm. you don't have repairs to budge, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then the loading, which is extremely efficient now, mm -hmm. right? In my view, I said, oh, the 40% sounds like a very good reduction in cost. Right. And so mm -hmm. I applaud. Right. Now, farmers argue that that cost has not gone down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What has gone on is the actual loading of the barge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Now, ASR and the president said, oh, the cost has gone down. The farmers are saying otherwise. Mm -hmm. When they presented to my staff in administrative culture, I've always, always, from before I became the air representative mm -hmm. or the minister, I've always argued those costs as a farmer, mm -hmm. right? I have always argued, I have always questioned. So I became the minister, <laughs> and when they presented to us, my, st my senior staff was, was very worried about these costs. Mm -hmm. And I have people around me, Isani, that have, been, that have invested time and effort and research hours, days and mm -hmm. days, to try to find some kind of a solution to the impasse. And they're very knowledgeable in the sugar industry. Mm -hmm. And I recall asking, you say, well, there's a cost that we will absorb, mm -hmm. BSI. And so one of my senior team asked me, so are you saying that you will absorb this cost for the farmers out of the goodness of your heart? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. So like I tell you, I've seen documents, yeah. right? Which said 40%. No, they are saying it's a reduction in cost. I think then they say it's exactly the same per ton mm -hmm. to move sugar mm -hmm. from Orange Drop to a hill mm -hmm. to the port, exactly the same as from BSI to Big Creek. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same per ton. I say, hold on. How can you convince the farmer that this is accurate? Mm -hmm. How is it that it's the same amount per ton? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You having all these charges of repairing barges and demorage, you have that now no more. And moving so you now these are the things that in my view, and I explained to Cabinet and to Prime Minister, that the commission inquiry is the best thing that will ever happen to this industry and to mm -hmm. any industry that undergoes similar situation. Mm -hmm. We have a twenty twenty four now. Mm -hmm. sugar industry, a modern factory operating under a 50-year-old sugar industry act. It's time to upgrade. Change it. Serious yeah. time to, to yes. absolutize that, no. that law. And, and my ministry, in a hundred days, as we said, mm -hmm. came up with the sugar industry act draft. I'm not an attorney. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The farthest I studied liar was Bush liaring. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But the other members of cabinet who are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were accused of not consulting BSI. We said, this is the document, can you... They said, that's too, too little time, I need more time. Mm -hmm. We gave him a month just to receive an extra note saying that we have no interest in this. Mm -hmm. We consulted with Santander. They gave us their points. Mm -hmm. When we came back with the document, they said, this document is no good. It violates the rights of... And so it was shown out through the window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you call it in Malaysia? You throw it in the bath water. Something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were, to add to that, then they take us to court. Mm -hmm. They challenge the sugar industry, I think in nine sections of sugar industry. Mm -hmm. We tried to pass a regulation to export sugar. You need a license, mm -hmm. and the license is conditional. You have to provide us with uh, 
amount of sugar you're going to export, how much is fair trade sugar, mm -hmm. how much has been paid to the farmers. Mm -hmm. So to help get the farmers paid there, you know, yeah. they also took that to the court. Yeah. And so the government is in a very difficult position. Mm -hmm. When they took it to court, however, uh, they prevailed on several of these points, correct? Yeah, on the, uh, well, again, that again is another point that's arguable. Mm -hmm. It's debatable because the judgment seems to be very confusing or conflicting. I do not mm -hmm. know what, I do not know if judges understand because the situation is very complicated. Mm -hmm. If the judges did understood what the problem is, right? And so the judgment is being made. Um, the interpretation seems to be a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Because one group of lawyers understand it this way, the other set of lawyers understand it this way, independent lawyers understand it another way, and so it's difficult, mm -hmm. right? However, they have acted on it, mm -hmm. and they have stopped paying the Sugar Industry Development Fund mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, the, to, to the Sugar Board. We have maintained the Sugar Board alive, still paying salaries. The government has to assume that, that <coughs> financial responsibility now. Yes, but yes. remember that a mm -hmm. part of that Sugar Industry Development Fund mm -hmm belongs to the farmers. Remember, the farmers get mm -hmm. to pay 65% of everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything, but everything when the sugar is made with money from manufacturing allowance all the way down to Europe, mm -hmm. the farmers pay 65%. So a part of that money belongs to the farmers. We have requested that they send it over to Sugar Board so that mm -hmm. we can continue the work of Sugar Board. They have not done so. Mm -hmm. Right? And now they want us to get the, uh, consult the other associations. Look, no one can operate in an environment like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one. And, and hence, I understand Minister Henry Usher's comment on vibes. Mm -hmm. And it, reached, it reaches to a point where it's frustrating mm -hmm. that you cannot move forward, mm -hmm. right? But is the solution to nationalize the industry a, a good one? I, I've been asked that question. I, as, as a farmer... Forgive me, comes as, off as, as, as a, a bit knee-jerk that one would... Yeah. That one would Put that out there. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. as a farmer, as a farmer, and I don't know where people misunderstood or misguided, mm -hmm. but a farmer is a businessman. Yes, mm -hmm. first and Absolutely. foremost. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> so some people say, "Oh, I look at the mm -hmm. industry as a, far as a businessman." Mm -hmm. Well, a farmer is not a farmer because he's not a businessman. A mm -hmm. farmer is, in the, is a farmer because he's in the business. Yeah. Yeah. So I, and from the experience we had in Belize. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that nationalizing is the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that the private sector belongs to the private sector. Mm -hmm. When governments get involved in running these private sectors, we run yeah. into trouble. And, and, and history has shown us that. Yep. Mm -hmm. I believe that there has to be options. Mm -hmm. I cannot go to America as Dario's meat pie, excellent meat pie. The best meat pies in Belize. Mm -hmm. I don't have to charge for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then want to open a business in the US mm -hmm. for selling meat pies. And when I get there, of course, they are governed by laws, food mm -hmm. safety laws, and, this, and the sales yeah. law, and all these tax right. laws. And therefore, I tell them, you know what? I don't like your laws. I will take mm -hmm. you to court for it because you've, I, you're violating my rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you knew these laws were there from before yeah. you became owner mm -hmm. of this business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your business plan should have been around yeah. this law. Yeah. Right? No. We want to modernize the law. We understand the laws are weak. Mm -hmm. Let us work together to upgrade, to make the law modern. Mm -hmm. Listen, Belize is not the only country that produces sugar cane and sugar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This began 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the Europeans, the English were the first, I think, well, we, look to at this, to we look at this model uh, um, of Mauritius, for instance, mm -hmm. being sort of like the standard for how sugar ought to be uh, produced, milled, Exploded. sold onto the international mm -hmm. market, and the existing <coughs> laws but, but that right are sugar. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm, I said this to the cabinet and to prime minister. Joaquin began 56 years ago mm -hmm. to produce commercially and across mm -hmm. the world and being traded. Every single country that has produced sugar cane or sugar has gone through similar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. similar situations. Mm -hmm. But they have known how to manage it. Mm -hmm. And sugar cane is always 
a, 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 an industry of thousands of producers. Mm -hmm. Mexico has similar amount of producers like us, mm -hmm. right? And they have gone through the same thing. Their law is 47, 53 in favor of the farmers, mm -hmm. percent, on the mm -hmm. grass, not on the net. Brazil mm -hmm. the same, Guatemala the same. Look at Santander's model, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They have a modern model, simple. Mm -hmm. No net strip value and on this mm -hmm. and you remove that and you... No, no, it's a complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Santander has a very simple formula to farmers and nobody complains. There are not mm -hmm. much farmers there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you were to apply, look at that model. So let's look at the models available. No. Mm -hmm. BSI has accused or has has alleged mm -hmm. that Mauritius model is not the viable model. Mm -hmm. That is subsidized and it's from the World Bank reports mm -hmm. that look, most sugar industries in the world are mm -hmm. subsidized. And ASR, ASR comes from a country that's subsidizing much product, much products. Mm -hmm. Milk is subsidized, mm -hmm. cheese subsidized, everything's subsidized in America. Right? In Belize, we're not the we're not the best sugar producing country. Or we don't have the best sugar industry in the world. Mm -hmm. The mere fact that you have said to the world that you've lost money, five, six million dollars last year mm -hmm. in Belize as a sugar mill, mm -hmm. when you have access to 20, what, 15 years, 20 years of tax exemptions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even environmental tax. Mm -hmm. You have 10% of the fuel subsidy, except last year, we didn't give it to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a local monopoly on sugar sold. Mm -hmm. You have a monopoly on the U.S. Market. Market. quota. Yeah. You have the farmers paying you 65% of manufacturing allowance and from there onward up to Europe. And if you are broke, then Something is wrong. your accusation of saying that Mauritius is an inefficient industry and mm -hmm. uneconomic is neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so sorry. Uh, Go ahead. I want you to take me back to my initial question now before we run out of time. I want to get an understanding of what the negotiations were like in your creek. Because, Good. like I said, we the were sticking points there, the, Isani, most part. Mm -hmm. the sticking points, one, mm -hmm. the time frame. Um, the second was the fair trade. Mm -hmm. And the third was these, were these costs. Farming are saying, but you said you want to sign a rollover as mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Right? Sit, just like last year, except I put in these two costs. Mm -hmm. And I was coming to that. When asked, are we going to see new costs mm -hmm. levied to the farmers absolutely not lo and behold you have these costs it could be so that these costs are legitimate and they did not know mm -hmm. until now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but how do you convince the farmer yeah that, that, that is so one over. Yeah. and so the prime minister did the right thing and i must give kudos to the prime minister i believe that it was he was not in a very easy position just like i am he mm -hmm. is the head of state. Mm -hmm. He is bogged down with these very difficult decisions. And I think he made his intervention at the right time. Mm -hmm. He may be accused of maybe moving late, or we, all of us, we move too mm -hmm. late. But you, after you have exhausted all your options, then this is what I would do as the prime minister. Mm -hmm. And so I must give him kudos that he, he did the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, but coming back uh -huh. to the last question, is, I know you're, you're getting excited about the question. <laughs> Um, those costs, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister listened to the farmers mm -hmm. and he said, if you are doubtful of these costs, mm -hmm. let's put somebody independent to make an assessment of those costs. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I was very happy to when we made that skeleton, mm -hmm. uh, um, the skeleton draft and said, listen, this that we agreed to, you mm -hmm. agreed to this, you agreed. it is the final details that became the issue then mm -hmm. with the attorneys, the fine print that they yeah. refer to. Mm -hmm. Then they said, hold on, they start arguing about words like assessment, evaluation, mm -hmm. analysis, and I said, oh my gosh, I understand how lawyers make money now. <laughs> <laughs> but we came mm -hmm. to the final, mm -hmm. final draft, you know, and 
So Hugh O'Brien was said, okay, you will go in and make an assessment. So he for, comes on as somewhat of a consultant. Of a consultant. He mm -hmm. works in my ministry as my advisor. Mm -hmm. He's very good. Um, he's very fair, a very fair person, mm -hmm. and he understands the industry well. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I had no objection to that. Let you come in. Because first, you look at the uh, cost, legitimate or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they legitimate or not? Is it an invention um, that BSI wants to charge the farmers mm -hmm. and they are doubtful of it? Second is, if it is legitimate, then are the cost fair? fair. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, after they explained to us, you know, when we moved from BSI, from, from Port of Belize, this is what we used to pay. That is no longer there because there's no Steve during, but there's a terminal handling fee. And that terminal thing. The, the funny thing, too, is that last year, that was not on the agreement signed by the farmers. Mm -hmm. But BSI charged the farmers close to $600,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So farmers are saying, hold on, man, we never signed to this. Mm -hmm. How are you going to charge me this? Uh -huh. So to legitimize that, you have to get it now in. in, in right that in. does not, though, stop the farmer from saying, you're going to pay me back my $600 that I had nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? So again, again, Isani, it's very important. I think that's why the, the timing was very important. And so those two things, Hugh now will do the assessment, and he's the finish it within three months. I believe he'll do it before. Hugh is a very hard worker. And There's a question yeah. regarding that, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether three months is sufficient time for all of these um, deliverables, in a manner of speaking. No, no, no. Remember that Hugh will only do the study for the two costs mm -hmm. that the farmers are questioning. Mm -hmm. In three months, that can be done mm -hmm. quick, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if it's a legitimate cost, then yeah. uh, um, it will be there. Mm -hmm. Now, simultaneously, mm -hmm. we are starting now to implement the... Uh, commission inquiry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I understand that there are questions now with the terms of reference. They want mm -hmm. to know what the term of reference, or they want to uh, um, they want to have say in the terms of reference. We don't have time for that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The commission inquiry, at the commission inquiry act, mm -hmm. only the prime minister can request that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And um, now, if you want to challenge the commission inquiry and the terms of reference and those who are doing the, mm -hmm. the commissioners, then it's clear to me that it's a stalling process and you don't want to see this yeah. reach Compliance. its completion. Mm -hmm. So I think, but right now, everybody's talking about the commission inquiry. Oh, the commission inquiry, even both sides, mm -hmm. which to me, I believe is a good thing mm -hmm. um, because this commission inquiry will set the basis, it will have empirical measurements, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are, you are charging the farmer $160 per ton of sugar, um, dairy consumer sugar, and then plantation white sugar, one, 160 150 Now, how do we know that, that, that fee is correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So the commercial inquiry will do this and look into the demurrage, look into the repairs of barge, mm -hmm. look into the terminal handling, look into everything mm -hmm. and therefore make that public. Now, after it's made public and somebody said, remember mm -hmm. the solely recommendations, well, the commercial inquiry makes recommendations based on inquiry. Yeah. Minister, yeah. I have two, two questions before we conclude this conversation. If from the onset we understand that BSI is oil, BSCFA is water, and that the two don't normally mix. It's not a natural state, so to speak, based on contentions and the history of, of both entities. Couldn't the Prime Minister or the government of Belize have sequestered both parties into that very same negotiating room from the beginning and say, okay, Let's hammer out an agreement. We don't leave from here until we have something that is mutually agreeable, and then we proceed with the business of sugar. Couldn't this have been done from the beginning? Every, every prime minister mm -hmm. has a character and has a style of management. Mm -hmm. No two prime ministers are the same. Mm.
I understand that some time ago we had similar problem when Dimbaro was the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And he ordered Jose Novello, who works in my ministry, mm -hmm. very no no knowledgeable individual, you go and tell these two people mm -hmm. if there's no agreement, there's no safra. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, there was an agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister Jamrisonio is not that type of character. He wants diplomacy mm -hmm. to be the order of the day mm -hmm. and not appear to be a dictator. Mm -hmm. He wanted both to sit down and reach a solution. Mm -hmm. That's what I said to you, Sani, that after he had after he had tried all options mm -hmm. and at the end that's what he had to do. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. you will sit in here and there will be agreement. Mm -hmm. But he mm -hmm. tried to give them a chance first. But he gave them a fair chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, the farmers were being very frustrated. Mm -hmm. They were very angry. They accused us, and I say us, the government, that we are not in their favor. But as a government, we try, we have to be fair. Have to and be I've allies. been accused of mm -hmm. being on the farmer's side. Uh, the Prime Minister has been accused of being on the ESR side. That, and, okay, so no, which no. brings me, which yeah, brings yeah, me to this yeah. then, which brings <laughs> me exactly to this, right? The way how this thing played out in the public eye is that you're both being, in a sense, pitted against each, each other. other. Yeah. Where you emerged as the hero of the day and he was vilified as a person who could have dealt with it in a much, if much more efficient manner. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. As the Minister for Agriculture, I need to be out there with the farmers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not only the, the cane farmers, the cattle farmers and the corn farmers and all the other farmers. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister is the Prime Minister. He looks after the interests of the country. Mm -hmm. And so it will always appear to be like that. But the Prime Minister has tried his <coughs> best mm -hmm. right, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is perceived as that. And I am perceived that way because it's a natural situation where I'm the Minister for Agriculture and he's the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it would appear like that. But the Prime Minister's interest is to ensure that this industry survives. He knows mm -hmm. that I would never do anything bad or a bad decision that will, that will put the industry in a vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. And I know that he would never do the same. Mm -hmm. He would never cause problems that will put the industry in such vulnerable, weak, and mm -hmm. unstable position. Minister, the agreement has been signed now for two years, right? They've agreed to two years. What happens within those two years? How do we know that there is not going to be a My dear, I, I have full confidence mm -hmm. in the people who are going to do the commercial inquiry. Okay. This problem has to, has to end now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? I think that the most difficult sector that I have in my ministry is sugar. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is so complex. Mm -hmm. There are lives that depend mm -hmm. on sugar industry. There are 40,000 people mm -hmm. that depend directly and indirectly on sugar industry. Mm -hmm. It is an economic move. At this time, it is the strongest foreign exchange right now. Mm -hmm. So we need to get ASR and BSI to, to work, to produce, to work with the farmers. We need to get the farmers. The confidence has to be rebuilt from mm -hmm. scratch, right? And that can only be done with the Commission of Inquiry. Okay. My final question, right? The Miller, ASI, BSR, ASR, BSI, sorry, has essentially sued the government of Belize, uh, mm -hmm. challenging... Uh, various areas of concern. That's before the High Court. But there is still an issue of the concession uh, for tax exemption and what have you. Explain that to us because we're trying to understand how on one hand I'm taking you to court but on the other hand I'm making a request that you waive certain taxes or what have you. This has to go before uh, Parliament at some point for approval. Explain that to us. Dear their concessions, I think, expired uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that they have requested the Prime Minister had not have not has not um, made any move on that. I will be very frank with you. Mm -hmm. I think that and BSI understands that given the environment, mm -hmm. it is difficult for the Prime Minister or cabinet to make a decision on that. Mm -hmm. You cannot then take let, it to the house. Uh, you cannot be taking me to court. Mm -hmm. You will recall that the Prime Minister gave an indemnity indemnity note mm -hmm. to be a CFA. We also give them ten percent of the fuel subsidy. Mm -hmm. And then you turn around and then sue me. Mm -hmm indirectly because of the indemnity note. Mm -hmm. And I think BSI is fully aware that the Prime Minister has to be abundantly cautious. Mm -hmm. how, you, how you sell that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you sell it to the cabinet? Mm -hmm. How do you sell that to the representative, to the, to the parliamentarians? Mm -hmm. And so I believe that, that this problem has to be solved. And those lawsuits have to be managed before the Prime Minister would make a decision. Mm -hmm. I think that the Prime Minister, just like I, would want to yield to the concessions mm -hmm. because it's an industry that requires investment mm -hmm. and this is an incentive for them to invest. I would love to see more industries come to the country and have these benefits, but you have to manage them and you have to... Uh, it, it is difficult right, to approve concessions when given the environment. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a marriage mm -hmm. and it's not. Mm -hmm. So how do we handle it? So, I think the Prime Minister, uh, uh, in time, will manage the situation. He is, he is very knowledgeable. He knows the industry. He is mm -hmm. a businessman. He understands the investments that these people have made. Mm -hmm. And he wants, but I believe that he would want to see this matter solved and solved fast mm -hmm. so that we can get back to business as usual. In my view, I believe the Prime Minister wants, to solve, wants this matter solved so that we can move on. Minister, we're wrapping up now. Um, we did discuss a little bit on the sugar. We didn't have time to go fully into it. But my final question is, are we're now revamping the Constitution. We have a whole PCC. Um, are there any conversations about putting the sugar out as a contention in there? Oh, yesterday I was at the George Price Day mm -hmm. activity in Orange Rock. And uh, there were two persons who approached me and told me that during the consultations, um, the matter of sugar cane came up okay. and I think that there are people who yes I know it is now they said that they want something about the industry being in the constitution so again um, I haven't been to any of them but this is what they have said to me okay. So hopefully we can see something. <laughs> hopefully we can get this matter resolved in, Probably, in yeah. the near future. Yeah. Right? But yeah. um, we want to say thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know we have a lot more to discuss, but the time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. And I know you have places to be. But um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you too. I hope you come back so that yeah. we continue this It's always wonderful to be here and to explain mm -hmm. the situation as it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Minister. All right, we're going to take the break. And speaking of taxes, we're going to move into another conversation about uh, your property tax and uh, the discount packages for 2024. Stay with us. Technology is ubiquitous, and it's transforming how, when, and where we work. Fulltech Systems is placing award-winning devices in the hands of information workers, allowing them to work without compromise in a world without wires, to innovate, create, and to maximize productivity anytime, anywhere. 
satisfying the needs of the desk-centric remote and field worker and every other worker in between. We are providing the industry's best devices to businesses going through the process of digital transformation. Partner with us today to provide the solutions that will allow your employees to work effectively and efficiently to enhance your customer's experience. Fulltech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. If we all don't come together and work together to change the bigger climate picture, yeah, these efforts will be in vain. It's right there. I believe that we have something special that is also a secret right now, which is unexplored, undiscovered. A little bit of sugar for German all morning, catching lobster and conch. And then we realize it's time for lunch. And man, it's gonna be good. I think they deserve it. I'm connected. Yo. I'm connected. We're connected. Create the perfect broadband bundle that fits your style with Smart Connect. With the Junior Bundle, get 50% off your national calls and up to 6 gigabytes of data at no extra cost. Get postpaid added for an additional cost of only $25 with the Prime Bundle. Stay connected with unlimited Smart to Smart calls plus 6,300 megabytes of data and free international minutes. For the family, pay $28.13 more and get the Binge Watchers Bundle with Netflix. This bundle gives you four profiles with unlimited streaming on multiple devices. Visit a showroom near you to sign up and personalize your own bundle combination with Smart Connect. Smart, bringing people together. And welcome back from sugar to taxes, Sani. We are <laughs> yes. moving into uh, the property tax discount packages of 2024 here in Belize City. Joining us in studio, we have the evaluation manager at the Belize City Council, Mr. Troy Smith. Good morning. Morning, morning. So before we get into the discount packages, mm -hmm. right, I really would like for you to um, discuss with our viewers why is it important for us to to pay our taxes yeah. on time. Well, it read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because what I wanted to do this morning was to get a quickly background mm -hmm. how the BDC City Council get this department under their portfolio. Yes. Um, it started in 1997 when the Ministry of Lands and the National Infrastructure Project, they want to empower the municipalities to become dependent and not mm -hmm. independent on the government. Mm -hmm. And in the early 1900, um, um, say about 1996, so the mm -hmm. council used to receive the assessment from the Ministry of Lands. So there was no department at right. the council. There was a, in the days of a ledger book where the assessment was done by the ministry and then sent to say, the council. In 1997, when they formed the National Infrastructure Project, was to give these council teeth and mm -hmm. empowerment, for example, National Fire Service would have fallen under the city council, a portion of the police department, mm. and then valu valuation. But so happened on the valuation was transferred to mm -hmm. the municipality in 1999. Mm. So when we receive these fires in 1999, we may have to build a department to mm. become sustainable and more effective. And so from them to know the BDC the council has developed this department to look at all the taxes within BDC city. 
to ensure that the job of that department was to identify these properties that are on the tax net to create this revenue stream for mm -hmm. the council. And so you have the valuation, and you got revenue department, and you got finance department. And so the, 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 the start mm -hmm. is from the valuation department because mm -hmm. if they don't value, then revenue can't collect. Yeah. Revenue can't collect, finance can't spend. Mm -hmm. And so that is where the city council came from a, from a way back um, beginning. And now we find ourselves now more instrumental and more autonomous in looking at the BDC itself. And so we gone from a database from one million to over eleven million dollars in oh. current, because by law every five years there's a quinquennial, which means we do a mass revaluation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But within the five years, we call it the ensuing period, is where if a property put an alteration, the city council have the authority right there, and then we in mm -hmm. that year to do the necessary adjustment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When in recent time you have to wait for the ministry yeah. to send that. Yeah. And so it's to give the, accounts, the council autonomous to manage its affair mm -hmm. and not to be dependent much on the national government. Mm -hmm. And so we are doing good so far, but there's a lot more need to be done mm -hmm. because yeah. this city is so unique yeah. and it's rapidly growing. Yeah. And up on the south side, I was doing the homework just yes, looking at the, the Hamuka acreage versus um, north side versus in south side, what we find that south side is bigger than that side, mm -hmm. but lesser tax. North side is small, but got a higher taxation mm -hmm. based on the infrastructure. All right. right? And so we, we know we have a database now where we identify we have about 18,000 parcels for MBD City. Mm -hmm. wow. On our tax net, we have about 16,000 accounts, which means that there are multiple building mm -hmm. on one property yeah mm -hmm. but then we have basically about, say, about 15 14 strong um, parcel assess so we know there are still a huge amount of property that are not on a tax base yeah. and so to bring it on a tax base you have to understand that you have to get the data by at the national framework the lands department mm -hmm. because you need to know who is the owner we need contact now because we're moving to a new era of e government where everything mm -hmm. electronic everything are online yes. And so the city council is looking at a mobile app mm -hmm. that you could tap into your property, property, trade, liquor, and then other services that you require to see what is your account. Oh, that's and cool. so we are trying to look at be very creative and make a smart city. Mm -hmm. We look at downtown, you cannot find parking. The online payment can be done mm -hmm. easy, all right? And then and have to look at how you how, how get a space and so we're looking at very creativity way. I'm not campaigning, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that, that persons are um, privy to, to understanding the way their taxes yeah, assist and, 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 the, and the growth the, of the city? That's where I'm going because how does you calculate taxes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this city, like I said, under this chapter 665 of the law of Belize, which is Proper Tax Act, is there's two rates that mm -hmm. we charge in Belize. There is an unoccupied rate. Mm -hmm. which is 2% of the value, the market value of your property. So, so in some case, it's higher when it's empty. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Because the spirit of the law is to discourage on development. Mm -hmm. Because once you have property empty within the city or the municipality, you'll find it depreciate the value around it. Mm -hmm. If you don't maintain, and we're doing not over, um, over And I'm glad property, that you're saying that. Right? Right. Because, <laughs> huge amount. look, where I live, there's an, a huge expanse of yeah. unoccupied Correct. land. Correct. It's Correct. overgrown. Correct. I, as a matter of fact, the last time it was ever cleared was when Darrell Bradley was in his first term as mayor yeah. of Belize City. Yeah. It's to say that perhaps we need to look at land reform yeah. more seriously. Yeah. I think a model that I was impressed with was when I had visited Taiwan several years ago, where they tell you, Anybody could apply for a piece of land, but you're given a specific time to develop that property. There we go. If not, it falls back there into state control and somebody else can and, apply and for it. we don't have that here. We don't have that here. Yeah. What we do, we yeah. gain a piece of land and then we sit down and speculate and yeah. hope that the value goes up in the next yeah. 10 years and put it back yeah. on the market. Yeah. But like you said, yeah. it serves to draw down on the value of everything else yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is around it. Yeah. Well, I can give good news to that. The BDC the Council last year mm -hmm. did, we have did a project in mm -hmm. regards to that same concern where we identify all these properties that are abandoned, mm -hmm. which means then it's not being bush, maintained. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the taxes. The idea is to see 
Holy City Council to take control of this property. Mm -hmm. Because it's private property, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. But there is provision in the law that the government can do public acquisition, mm -hmm. take it back mm -hmm. for public purpose. Yeah. And so the idea of the council is to look at, we already did it, what, 2,600 abandoned property within mm -hmm. the city. We get it on an ArcGIS map system. We know mm -hmm. where they are. We know the owners. Yeah. The idea is to try to reach out first to the owner to tell them, listen to me, you got a time period, 20, mm -hmm. 70 to 21 days to bush. The rest we are moving. Mm -hmm. When we move in, we bush, but then that's a band-aid fix. Can you mm -hmm. want bush? Then you go to the next three months again, you bush again. Mm -hmm. It's a band-aid fix. The idea is that once you do not maintain your property, and we do that, mm -hmm. it builds a tax base for sale. Yeah. yeah. And we're not in the business sell property, but mm -hmm. the law gives us that right mm -hmm. to do so. Mm -hmm. And so all these abandonment property we are trying to reach out and they are absentee owners. Hmm. Most people are absentee owners on the tax net. The track right? the track that I'm I'm referring to has been there yeah. for yeah. over twenty, twenty five mm -hmm. mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything else is developed mm -hmm. around Correct. it except Correct. that that and, that and stretch. it's because it's title and you cannot find the owner mm -hmm. so everybody untouched. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The moment you touch it, you're surprised yeah. to know the owner's owner's somebody the way we go. And mm -hmm. so that's the, the, the heartbeat of the council to identify this problem. It's a mm -hmm. serious problem with the city. Because it become a nuisance. Mm -hmm. People hiding gone in this abandoned property. It becomes People throw garbage there. So mm -hmm. much. Name it. Rodents. It, it really yes. runs down the city and it looks so bad. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's yeah. something we're working on and I think that will continue as we go along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to look at the occupied property now, it is 9%. Mm -hmm. It's a simple formula to calculate a tax. It's a 9% on the annual rental value. Mm -hmm. So for unoccupied, it's 2% of the value of the market. Mm -hmm. And for occupied, it's 9 per 10%, sorry, no, we created it by one. 10% mm -hmm. of the rental value. The rental value. So that's mm -hmm. basic, but we have we form a national database by our methodology data that the Ministry of Government, we sit down in all the municipalities to look at a one-based formula system. Because mm -hmm. you're going to see the council, you've got one formula. You've got a PG, you got a next formula. Yeah. Yeah. Got a, so yeah. you, have, yeah. it, you have to it, be able to standardize it. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the national government will look, look and to mm -hmm. centralize the data. Mm -hmm. So that, that you say, what, but why they pay 3000 mm -hmm. But you say, no, understanding the geographic location. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you could it's appreciate, different. You could yeah. appreciate right? why perhaps it's more expensive in San Pedro. There we go. It would be in Punta there Gorda. There we go. So on Correct. And so because of the data. Mm -hmm because of the, the rental data. Mm -hmm. And then this rental data, the city council has brought in a consultant look at rent restricted act, the rent restricted act. Because mm -hmm. we have, there's no control of rent. Yeah. People rent based off um, all different sentimentals. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the city, you yeah. find two same property, mm -hmm. same size, two different rent. Yeah. You said yeah. this is a way the tax, the, this, you mm -hmm. know, central. Yeah, because yeah. of, because there's no rent we have no control, but the, there is an act where the city council, by in the old days, can maintain, you must come to us for the rent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But remember, people got mortgage, people got other yeah. obligations. So if you want to pay the 3000 pay the 3000 that does not mean that it worth 3000 mm -hmm. It's the open market. Yeah. Plus, too, right. there's, there's a high demand for living in Belize City, there yeah. we go. where persons may not be able to purchase a property, so they would want to rent because the job is in Belize City. So go. they have to put up with essentially whatever the landlord or the landlady decides that exactly. they want for the property. Yeah. It's up to you. We, Take it or leave we, it. We, yeah. we call it demands and supply. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want yeah. it, you pay for it. But you're fine, but the market so fluctuate because in Belize, Belize is the normal seller's market, Belize is mm -hmm. a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you find what the value may be, you may not, not get in mm -hmm. the open market. Yeah. Something mm -hmm. again more. Than ever. And this is the reason why the national database, when it comes to stamp duty, mm -hmm. lands have their own version department where I buy a property from you for 50000 but you know that they worth 50000 mm -hmm. yeah. And that's an understatement of values. And this mm -hmm. is where we create our next problem at the national level, mm -hmm. where if you look at comparable data, mm -hmm. it's it, it wrong because mm -hmm. I buy it for fifty, yeah. but property worth 100000 mm -hmm. You understate it. Mm -hmm. and then lands come and reassess it with 90,000 or mm -hmm. 125. Mm -hmm. And so there's no kind of control of this value yeah. because of open market, mm -hmm. all right? And then the law speaks about a willing seller to a willing purchaser. Mm -hmm. There was a matter where 
through action though, if I buy a property through action for 50,000, lands have to keep that because that's a public action. Mm -hmm. But from a freelancer, then me, I could have a negotiation and say, boy, listen to me. Yeah, but mm -hmm. Troy, right. if I'm sitting on a piece of property, right, and I run into financial hardship and I need to unload this property, right, I may not be able to get for the piece of land what it's actually valued. So, for Correct. instance, if it's $300,000, I will take whatever we agree upon yeah. because I need to come out of this hole. Yes. Yeah. So, now I go from understanding that the value of the property may be $300,000 and I offload it for $75,000 because I need the money Correct. right oh. now. Correct. Yeah. Now, when that purchase is, is concluded, mm -hmm. you walk away with something that is less two hundred and twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, for instance. Mm -hmm. How do you report that in terms of the actual value? Even as if you mentioned? report that, mm -hmm. there is a value-based data that lands mm -hmm. that they don't know the true value. Yeah, and another stamp duty is not based on what you report on. What is mm -hmm. the value? Mm -hmm. So even mm -hmm. though you get seventy-five thousand, mm -hmm. they can still put it on the three hundred thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the market value. Mm -hmm. wow. Remember, it's a five percent stamp duty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. yes, I understand, and that is where mm -hmm. there was an argument where, through the public action, where a person had a buy a piece of land mm -hmm. for fifty thousand. When he reached a barrel pan, they put one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. That's for mm -hmm. argument's sake. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it went to court, and the mm -hmm. magistrate is saying you cannot, when it comes to public action, mm -hmm. even though it might be under sale, mm -hmm. that is the sale at that That's time. Mm -hmm. But from an yeah. open market, it's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Because they, mm -hmm. they, there's no restriction there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a restriction in the public action, mm -hmm. but there's none in the open action. But coming back to the initial conversation yeah. of the, um, the ta property tax yeah. packages that the city council is offering, let's Correct. get into those um, and why is it essential for homeowners, to, uh, property owners, yeah. to get into it? Even though, yeah, the city council by law is mandated, not, not have to, but they can, I cannot. But every year now the council is giving back this incentive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to property owners for getting relief. Right. And right, because we know things hard with the council and everybody. Mm -hmm. So this council decided by our SI, by resolution, mm -hmm. recommend a incentive package for 2024, which mm -hmm. is if you pay in January, there's a 15% only on the current. Mm -hmm. So if you got areas, you have to deal areas separately okay. and then you'll pay the 15% less on the current in february is a 10 percent mm -hmm. that we give and then in march a five percent mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but why there is none in april it's it's when tax down carry, but april mm -hmm. 1st is when the tax due yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it um prepayment mm -hmm. so if you, you pay early you get and the good news now officially you now the last time we couldn't say it, i could mm -hmm. say it no <laughs> that come january 1st mm -hmm. 2024 senior citizen once you're 65 years old if you've got multiple properties, mm -hmm. it's only on where you reside. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get 35 from 25% oh. to 35%. Mm -hmm. wow. That's true. Out the that's not that, that, that you're gonna cap. Mm -hmm. That's true out the entire year. So you if you pay in April, like I was standing up on the total mm -hmm. arrears Everything. interest that give them a, a relief. Yeah. Because we, we realize that these people work hard out in life. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got a pretty house, but you don't know the income. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody have a small pension. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for get a break, the council decided to reach out and go higher mm -hmm. by 10% wow. more than the, the And usual. that's for the year. Now, these nice. taxes now go mm -hmm. into the central fund of the council for what? For the essential services that mm -hmm. people are so concerns about mm -hmm. streets and the drains issue, yes. the drain the street mm -hmm. and the garbage, garbage. Yep. but then we also do beautification traffic mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. all right and but then if you don't pay how can then yeah. the service be delivered mm -hmm. so it's a that's how the versus a service that's how the city council tax. realizes its revenue though yeah by by implementing tax measures and yeah. what have you and collecting on it so that it could Correct. carry out its function the normal profit organization mm -hmm. we say mm -hmm. this year we are like for a profit, mm -hmm. it's based on the amount of people register, trade license, the liquor license, property tax comes mm -hmm. in that helps the council cash flow. Mm -hmm. Let me say this though the easy payment, the, there is a provision now. We used to have collectors, mm -hmm. that's good now. We, have, we still have them, agents within Bidi State, bust it into 16 zones mm -hmm. to try to decentralize the, the, the data in the collection component. We have the online payment. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go down to again. You could mm -hmm. pay online. 
are error we can say what collector we have inter internal collector and external collector mm -hmm. so there's many ways to pay and the uh, discount so is still within the still if, if i pay online still I still within get the you're less the less okay. the 15 or whatever discount okay. that you actually obligated to get Wow. And then we update the system and send you your, your zero balance. This is just a reminder, folks. It's <laughs> only for Belize City. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> it's the Belize City the Belize Council. Belize City Council yeah, yeah. that is giving Not these. Not the Belma City I'm just council. saying, I have Each to. Each council gives. Yeah. Each council gives. Each gives a different incentive. Yeah. yeah. Right? We might be the lowest some people. I hear in Carrizal at 35 on the current. Okay. Yeah. So oh, so. Have to move. Everybody different. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. <laughs> but right. but it's great. It's a great initiative for persons that are like you said a maga season, right? Yeah. So yeah. giving that yeah. that little bit of an incentive is is good for them. Can you for our viewers just one more time, how much discount is for okay. January? For yeah. Sure. Um, effective January first, um, we are giving a fifteen percent on the current only, mm -hmm. a ten percent in February, and a five percent in March. And for senior citizen, 35% throughout the year, only one property where you reside. The others get the other incentive, but only one get the 35%. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I think that for, for another conversation, we have to dive deep into why it's so important that we have yeah. to pay our taxes yeah. on time, yeah. particularly if we want to see the beautification of the city Correct. or the city functioning and flowing. Um, we have to pay with tax. That's mm -hmm. that's the way that's the bottom work. Line. Yeah, um, but I want to say thank you, Mr. Smith, for coming by. Okay. Are there any final words that you well, want to say? Well, just want to continue to encourage property owners and business owners, even with the tree license, and we ask that you still come in and try and make payments mm -hmm. to a tree license because, like we said, we there is provision for enforcement. Mm -hmm. We are trying to encourage first before we enforce. Mm -hmm. right. Property owners are not on the tax roll. We are supposed to come in and register the property. Guys, it's important that you be a part of your development. Great. All right. All right. Um, before we get into our final break, Isani, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about the fact that we had a, a wonderful long weekend. We had a holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and that was in lieu of uh, the Right Honorable George Price's birthday yesterday. So we here uh, at Channel 5 would like to wish our uh, the late Honorable George Price, a happy birthday by this uh, video clip that we're going to show right now. You don't become a politician to make money. You become a politician to serve the people. Yeah, Mr. Price wasn't into making money. He wasn't into living a lifestyle of uh, wealth. He grew up like most of the children of his day under colonial rule where there was no electricity, little if any running water, no modern plumbing, and none of those basic things we today take for granted. George Kittle Price fought many uphill battles, transforming himself into what many Belizeans see him as. A virtuous man and someone who would be chosen to lead this nation to independence. A revolutionary and determined man, relentless in his pursuit of our right to be an independent nation. Others said the Belizean hero, national builder, a worker, a servant of the people, a force of nature in the form of a statesman, an intellectual change agent with a soft demeanor but with a warrior spirit. Some others said he was the epitome of humility, selfless service, and one love of country. I was amazed at one who said he was a lion, a true servant of the people. Another said, beloved father to a beautiful country, Belize. It was Price's way of life. Price died at age 92, leaving an immense legacy, one filled with many accolades, including Belize's highest honor, the Order of National Hero, and the respect of Belizeans across the political divide. George Price was the child of Belize. Belize gave birth to him and nurtured him 
and thus he was sent to fulfill the mission of his creator and not necessarily to fulfill the desires of his parents. Much has been written, said, and remembered about the accomplishments of George Price. And one such singular accomplishment has been the attainment of our sovereign Belizean independence with all our territories intact. Under his leadership, Belize experienced the introduction of universal adult suffrage in 1964, 54, sorry. Prior to this time, only propertied males could vote. Today, every adult Belizean, 18 years and older, has the right to exercise his or her vote. A remarkable achievement by a man missioned to serve his Belizean people. Then there was the achievement of internal self-government in 1964, which would serve as the precursor or forerunner to what would become Mr. Price's most coveted achievement, the attainment in 1981 of our Belizean political independence. That was my first lesson from George Price, help the poor. The second one was this custom that he uh, started, and I think very few leaders in the world have uh, realized the value of that, to meet the people one on one. And he did this religiously every week on a Wednesday. The clinic, the famous Wednesday clinic. So that was the second lesson that I learned from him, which I adopted myself uh, when I became Prime Minister. <clears throat> anyway, we had a good meeting. That was my first encounter with George Price. Later on, of course, he enveloped me, in fact, took me into the party and welcomed me. And I ran my first election and lost. But he came to me and he said, don't worry, I lost my first election too. Apparently he had run for city council before, and town council anyway and had lost his first election too. But then he went on to win, as you know, I think from, from the 50s, right up to the time of independence. He was first minister and then prime premier, and of course, prime minister when we got our independence. And of course, I spent many years under his tutelage, if you like, he was my mentor when I became a member of the cabinet. And that was quite uh, an experience for me, just to watch him, how he, how he conducted his meetings in cabinet. Um, the first lesson he gave us in cabinet was, if you want to be rich, go into business but don't become a politician. You don't become a politician to make money. You become a politician to serve the people. Yeah, Mr. Price wasn't into making money. He wasn't into living a lifestyle of uh, wealth. He wasn't interested. In fact, he lived like a peasant. He would walk on the streets in Bambopan, picking up the garbage, paper that people litter, setting lessons for people who watch it, of course. Um, but he was a very humble man, very modest. When I traveled with him, for instance, in touring the country, all he would have is some sardine sandwiches, you know, for lunch. I tell him, Mr. Price, I can't handle that, you know. <laughs> well, I would say the greatest lesson that Mr. Price gave us is to maintain your dignity and your honesty. He was a man of integrity. He didn't get going to politics, as I said before, to make money. In other words, Corruption was a thing that you could never accuse Mr. Price of being corrupt in politics. He wasn't. 
And I believe that's why the people loved him. That's why you and I love him. Um, because he was so a pure, such a purist in that, in that sense. Um, and I think that will live on forever because he's one of the few in the world today that has lived a life of integrity, complete integrity. Happy birthday to the Honorable George Cadle Price. Your legacy as a visionary leader has left an indelible mark on our nation. May this special day be filled with joy, reflection, and warmth of the impact you've made. Continue to rest in peace as we celebrate you today. Wow. All right. Happy birthday to our um, belated Right Honorable George Price, indeed. Um, there were several interviews, that clip was done uh, from years of George Price being a uh, Prime Minister all the way up to persons that have, you know, shared life experiences with him um, in 2023. You had the Right Honorable Side Musa, you had John Bersenio, they all had uh, different experiences with uh, George Price. I, I met him when I was really, really little mm -hmm. uh, at a school rally and he seemed so larger than life Maybe because he was tall and I was so small but um, it was I didn't think anything of a person in power mm -hmm. uh, attending some children's rally to be this big deal mm -hmm. but uh, apparently and now that I'm that much older I realize that it is it is a big deal for somebody like him in his um, in his position to just want to go out and see a school rally and, and see the children and see the citizens. Um, we don't see that much today for a, a person in power to be able to do that. Maybe because we have a larger population, uh, the responsibilities are, are, are larger now. But I think back then we could have appreciated that from our prime minister and the premier. Mm -hmm. Excellent point you've made. Uh, the, <laughs> no, it, it's it's again as i mentioned in our um what's buzzing yeah. segment earlier where i was talking about um how certain aspects or elements transcend time right it's the same way when you look at the achievements of george price and you look at the impact that his uh, political life and his life as a belizean has had on generations that came after him mm -hmm. And I think that video that we saw just now sort of encapsulates that, right? When yeah. you listen to what Said Musa shared, when you listen to what John Bersena shared, <clears throat> and others who spoke fondly about George Price, it embodies that whole mm -hmm. transition, that transcendence that I talk about. I, I find it um, a little bit refreshing that we talk about him. There's so many exhibits dedicated to him. There's so many books mm -hmm. um, written about him because I think it didn't dawn on me until a couple of years ago when my brother said that he, he was born right before mm -hmm. um, George Price's passing and it clicked that there is an entire new generation that yeah, we'll wouldn't never know, know or wouldn't know never who met he him. was, yeah. what he stood for, what yeah. he achieved. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, for the younger generation, he is someone that they will read about. Yeah. For those of us who had the opportunity to know him, we would have understood firsthand yeah. what that was and what that was like, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that, that's the thing about history. Yeah. We're Not history. all of us are going to be contemporaries. A lot of times yeah. we end up reading about our heroes and these nationalists and stuff, but mm -hmm. other people would have had that opportunity to live in that time where they knew these individuals. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, like I said, um, we are going to continue to celebrate this, um, this public and bank holiday uh, in light of the Right Honorable George Price's birthday. Um, may he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to take another break, our final break, and we'll be back for wrap up. So don't go away. We'll be right back.
I'm connected. Yo. I'm connected. We're connected. Create the perfect broadband bundle that fits your style with Smart Connect. With the Junior Bundle, get 50% off your national calls and up to 6 gigabytes of data at no extra cost. Get postpaid added for an additional cost of only $25 with the Prime Bundle. Stay connected with unlimited smart-to-smart -smart calls plus 6,300 megabytes of data and free international minutes. For the family, pay $28.13 more and get the Binge Watchers Bundle with Netflix. This bundle gives you four profiles with unlimited streaming on multiple devices. Visit a showroom near you to sign up and personalize your own bundle combination with Smart Connect. Smart, bringing people together. Your life just got a lot less complicated with Belize Bank Contactless MasterCard Debit Card. Introducing our standard debit and MasterCard Platinum Debit Cards. Now you can make purchases anywhere MasterCard is accepted with one tap, pay and go. Your contactless card never has to leave your hands, especially in these times. And your card is embedded with multiple layers of security. Platinum card holders get to enjoy extra benefits like price protection, purchase protection, trip inconvenience and luggage protection just to name a few. Start enjoying a cashless lifestyle today with the Belize Bank. Let's take a journey through the core functions of the Social Security Board. It all starts with registering as an insured person, employer, or self-employed individual. Sign up for a portal account to manage your Social Security information online. Just provide accurate information and click Create. This will give you access to a range of services and benefits. Next, your contribution, along with investments and other income, are collected and distributed into three funds. This ensures that the SSB fund is securely utilized to support various benefit programs. The SSB is committed to providing essential benefits such as sickness, maternity, injury, and pension. These benefits are paid out to eligible individuals as a part of the Social Security coverage. We help you navigate through life's challenges with financial security. Annual surplus accumulates to grow the fund each year. This surplus is invested into various industries, contributing to the growth and development of our nation. With each passing year, the fund continues to grow due to the annual surplus and interest revenue earned from prudent investments. This surplus, along with reserves, helps to bolster the SSB fund and provide a safety net for those in need. We've arrived at the end of our journey to better understanding how the SSB works. We remain committed to serving you and building a secure future for all Belizeans. Where you going, bro? The who distress you out again, Namule? Boy, I don't want to believe I'm the fool again. Again? Bro, I, I mess up this time for real, for real, for real. You want to really want off? Yes. Hey, why are you here? Can't make it a big deal. We Shad. know what I know how you going, though. Oh, up. man. You really want off? Ah, yeah? I take my plan, and I give up. I take my plan, and put it in a shinier. In a shinier? Why? Wait, so tell me something. You still appear for this plan? Why, yeah. But here it is. This plan, I can't leave this plan. Smart Belize! This plan, I can't leave this plan, yeah. This plan, I can't leave this plan. Post me a plan! This plan, I can't leave this plan. With Smart Belize, get unlimited data. Smart choice plan can light up your day. Uh -huh. Post me with eSIM, make everything better. Just visit Smart Showrooms today. I can't leave this plan. 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 Affordable for everyone. I can't leave this plan. The post be a plan. Cause the data really strong. One dollar. You know why? Listen. Eh. For the best post and free pay. You know that smart catch, you know? My bad. Brown commercial. She you could left me for another man The truth once I have my plan Once I have my smart plus plan And no worry cause the data strong I know when you bleed Can't start that all I need And you could tell me where you are But I know I left this plan Smart have the best services We post your plan of everything So you could talk and text unlimited Come say
set up your group. We got share plan one and two. Up to ten friends can connect anywhere. Boom! I can't let this plan. I can't let this plan. It was be a plan, cause the data are really strong. Don't you get down? 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 Smart! Bringing people together. If we all don't come together and work together to change the bigger climate picture, yeah, these efforts will be in vain. It's right there. I believe that we have something special that is also a secret right now, which is unexplored, undiscovered. I've been with the sugar preserve all morning, catching lobster and crunk. And then we realize it's time for lunch. And man, it's gonna be good. I think they deserve it. Wrapping things up here on OIE, we want to say a big thank you to all of our guests uh, for tuning in, um, for coming in, sorry, this morning. A wonderful conversation with the Minister of Agriculture as well as the Belize City Council on tax packages for this year. And of course, thank you, our viewers, because without you, this would not be possible. If it is your birthday, today is January 16th. Happy birthday to you. We hope you have a wonderful day today. And if you have a birthday shout out or just a question or a comment, drop us a line right here at OIE at channel5belize.com. You can catch our live stream every day on Facebook at Open Your Eyes BZ and check out the highlights on Instagram at OIE Belize. And please do us the favor, join us again tomorrow when you open your eyes. To start your morning right. Be sure to keep your eyes, your minds, and your hearts open. We'll see you soon, Belize. Have a great day. It's going to be a hot one. Stay safe. Bye. Open Your Eyes was brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank.